Yeah, so today's talk is about the path to two billion images. Uh, Mapillary started in 2013 with zero images and since then has made it all the way to two billion images. And it's because of the, the community powering Mapillary. So it's yet another story about the power of community to, to get incredible map data that powers a whole bunch of use cases that we're going to talk about today. So. I'm Eduardo, I work uh, with uh, a lot of Mapillary's external community facing initiatives, um, also part of Meta, which is, uh, which is why you see the Meta logo there. Mapillary was acquired by Meta in 2020 um, and we're continuing the vision there. And we have Christopher Beto here um, and uh, yeah, we work very closely together on a lot of Mapillary uh, related projects. So the path to two billion images. The very first sequence was captured in Sweden 2013, this is where it all began. Uh, so this was the iOS app that was developed by the, the founder of Mapillary. And it's, it's barely a sequence. It's like two images, they're not really overlapping. Um, but it was a proof of concept. And the idea behind Mapillary at the time was if you could take multiple images and use computer vision to, um, to reconstruct them, understand the environment, um, you, you could start to derive a lot of map data around the world. And smartphones were getting better. Uh, there were, the cam cameras were actually decent now. They'd come a long way from the you know, 1.3 megapixel cameras that you had on the old Nokias. The smartphones around 2013 were actually getting really good. And so using computer vision, semantic segmentation, you could derive some pretty um, impressive information that we use for map building. Fast forward to 2023, I mentioned like we're almost at the 2 billion image mark. And one guy that's helped us a lot in getting there is Taichi Sun. You might have met him at the conference. Um, just look out for a big 360 camera that he has above his head. Uh, he's kind of contributed a lot of incredible imagery. So here you can see downtown prison, and um, some imagery he captured a couple of days ago. And this is what it looks like now. It went from a blank map. To, to imagery in all sorts of places. There's imagery in North Korea, there's imagery in canals in, in Amsterdam, there's imagery um, on, on desert tracks, not now, <laughs> desert tracks in Kazakhstan, all over the world. And we're gonna tell you a bit about why people are contributing. But um, I'll pass it over to Chris now to talk a bit about some of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes when you upload an image to Mapillary. So every image that comes into Mapillary it's going to come off of your device. That's your phone. We'll show you a little later about uploading in other ways. But once it hits the cloud, connects to that global repository of Mapillary imagery, we start doing things with it. And one of these things is, is we take all of your images and we run the Mapillary algorithm on them and we do two things. One is we segment everything in the image. So that means we draw lines separating between road and sidewalk and buildings and vegetation. Uh, so the shapes are part of that and then the labels are the other part of that. So it receives a category. So in a way we start to kind of index the world. And if you go into the Mapillary website, you can actually turn on this 3D model down in the bottom right corner. Uh, so we can look at that toward the end if we have extra time. And you can also start searching the world for things like what traffic signs are uh, like here in Kosovo. Or you can search for crosswalks that are in your hometown that were found in Mapillary images. Uh, so that comes from a 3D model that not only takes those images with the labels and the segmentation, but uses multiple images from different angles, uh, uses a structure from motion, which we support and build the open structure from motion uh, library as well that can be used for this. And we reconstruct that scene in three dimensions. But every point in these point clouds that you see here is coming from a pixel that has a label. So we're able to converge those and say, like we see here with these lines dropping from the sky, with icons uh, where different things like a street lamp are located in a, a spatial sense. So not just an image, but your image starts to become a scene and we can convert that to map data. We also, before anything else happens, are blurring on the platform. So it's something we've always done and we improved it to pretty much the maximum possible uh, we remove license plates, remove faces. So that's not used in the learning. Uh, 
that's removed. And that's very nice for a lot of users of Mapillary who want to share open data, uh, like city governments around the world, and also retain privacy. So that's kind of like a nice bonus of the service that makes it both open data, but also protected data at the same time. So quick intermission. We do have Mapillary images all over the world, as you saw. And we'll show, uh, we'll show a series of these quizzes as we go through. But we have right here a guessing game. Where in the world is this photo? So does anyone have ideas? There may be a prize if you guess right. Some hints. So this one is, is definitely not in a major city, right? It's somewhere in a, a large desert of the world. You're very close. Let's guess the country. Country? Atacama? Is in? Yes, correct. So you're a winner of a t-shirt. So Yunzi back here has t-shirts. <laughs> Let her know your size. <laughs> so we'll have more of these coming up. Great guess. That was really fast, actually. <laughs> So uh, part of the, when we put this presentation submission together, we, we wanted to unveil some of the new things that we've been working on at Maplery. And I think one of the big changes that you might notice over the last uh, couple of months is that we've started to rethink the, the apps. They haven't changed a lot in the last few years. And, and now we're starting to rethink what should the user experience look like uh, to help people collect map data with, without making an arduous task. So if you look here at what it used to look like on Android and iOS, it was particularly on Android, like rather, rather complicated for a lot of people. Um, I mean, it's still pretty easy to use, but there are a lot of buttons there that people just didn't use. And, and so from a UX point of view, it didn't make sense to bombard new people with all these buttons and then they're trying to work out what they do. Uh, and so one thing that we tried to do is, is simplify the experience for people um, starting for the first time with the app, but also make sure that we get better map data. A lot of people could customize the settings and, and that could potentially lead to, uh, you know, maybe people taking one photo and then waiting hundreds of meters until the next one. But Mapillary really benefits when people are taking a lot of overlap between the images, so images every three meters instead. Um, and that goes back to the point cloud underlying every image that Chris talked about before. And so part of the simplified user experience is making three meter the default. So here I was walking before, every three meters the iOS app automatically captures. And then there's also some logic behind, I was about to go around the corner just after this, this GIF cuts off. And it knows that the compass angle is changing, so I'm, I'm turning, and it's, it takes a lot more photos um, while you're turning to make sure that there's overlap um, and that the building that you see in the background has enough overlap for us to reconstruct that point cloud. So the user doesn't have to worry about any of this. They don't have to change any of the settings. The app is just capturing this data automatically. And, and the benefit for the end user is when they're uploading the data um, we're more likely to be able to detect things like the traffic signs that Chris was talking about or crosswalks because uh, we're getting a lot more imagery than what we would uh, with the settings that we had previously. It's also about unifying the experience on iOS and Android. Um, iOS has often had more features than Android, much to the chagrin of Android users. So we want to make sure there's feature parity across them, be able to develop new features more quickly. Um, and, and that's part of that unified design language. Another really cool thing is that the desktop uploader now supports video. In the past, if you wanted to upload video, you needed to mess around with command line tools, which was um, not something everyone was comfortable with. Uh, we've also added support for a, a, a wider variety of formats. So there's a file format called the CAM file format. Um, we, that, that's something that Google uses as their spec for Google Street View. So a lot of the people capturing for Google Street View can now upload that same data to Mapillary. And it's easy as dragging and dropping, in this case, a GoPro 360 file. And it very quickly um, works out where that image or where that video is and converts it to images once it's uploaded to the platform. So if you think about capturing um, and wondering how to get started, we can recommend these cameras we have. Like, I guess a lot of people contributing with GoPros of various generations, but the latest one is the 11 Black. Very easy to use. Obviously, just front-facing imagery or, or like, I guess, about, um, I can't 
can't remember the exact field of view, but it's, it's probably something like 160 degree field of view. And then there's the GoPro Max, which is 360. That's super easy to use. That's the one that I wish um, some of the, what, what you saw just uploaded then. There's the Lab Pano, which is a high-end camera if you're, you're getting really serious and working maybe with local government and want to capture a lot of imagery. And then you can go beyond that to hundreds of thousands of dollars. But the Insta360 is another very popular one with uh, professional capture. So another where in the world. Does anyone, well, you know what the prize is now. It's a T-shirt um, that Yunzi will, will hand out. So anyone want to hazard a guess where this could be? Give it get a few seconds. Yeah, just shout it out. Not China, no? Different continent. Not the Middle East. Uh, time zone wise, it's fairly similar to Europe, but it's not in Europe. Ethiopia is the right continent, but it's not Tanzania. Not South Africa. Not Kenya. It's one of the biggest cities in Africa. Yeah, who said over here someone's in Lagos? Yep. You got it? All right, Yunzi, uh, what was your name? Derek. Derek. Yep, so out the front, Yunzi. So, another up and coming tool that MapLayer is featuring more and more heavily in is the Rapid Editor for OpenStreetMap. And this uh, recently got an overhaul. So last year at FOS4G, we demonstrated the improved performance of Rapid. It's now based on the open source Pixie.js package that allows rendering uh, a lot more vector data a lot faster. It's usually used a lot in gaming engines, and we found it works very nicely for map data as well. And part of this means when you turn on Mapillary inside of the Rapid Editor, it also is a lot smoother than ever before. Uh, so Mapillary tends to add thousands of green points to the map if you're somewhere uh, like a big city. So Rapid does that really fast and makes it easy to use. At the same time, we have some new features we're exploring with Rapid. So finding uh, data that's recognized in Mapillary. We already show these things in, in one of the options. Like you can find speed limit signs, you can find uh, crosswalks, you can find street lamps. And we're looking at ways to make it easier to uh, add those to the map and validate them or reject them if they're not correct. And there's also other integrations uh, like the Osmos tool that automatically is searching for roads with no speed limits, but with mapillary traffic signs recognized and suggesting to edit that. Uh, so that's something you can turn on in the OpenStreetMap editors, and we want to make that more visible in Rapid. Uh, and we're looking also at just other things we can do, like finding sidewalks in mapillary imagery and helping users to map those more easily. So more to come. Keep an eye on Rapid as we continue developing it. So one limitation that we've had, um, you know, had people tell us about is that they want to capture 360 imagery, but they don't have the camera available. Uh, so that's why we created this camera grant program. And we've launched it in the United States and Europe, which are two very important areas for us at the moment. And it's very simple. We have partnered with, in the case of the United States, OpenStreetMap USA. And they're helping us to distribute the cameras. Um, so based on our experience, we, we realized that the GoPro Max is the easiest. So we give you a suction cup that you can put on top of your vehicle, um, which sticks really well. We give you the camera, an SD card, and we give you a selfie stick uh, if you want to do pedestrian capture, which is some of the stuff. Like yesterday, we went up to the fortress, for example, um, and it's very easy to, to walk to the fortress with a selfie stick and have really good 360 imagery so that people can tour Prizren uh, when, when they go back home. So the 360-degree cameras are being given out in the United States right now, and OSM Belgium is helping us do this in Europe. So I presume, like, hands up if you're from the United States here. Yuri, it's two people, um, and up the back there, and hands up if you're in Europe. Yeah, unsurprisingly a much bigger audience. So this is more relevant 
for you. Thanks to OSM Belgium, we've partnered with them um, and we're shipping the cameras to them. They'll be managing like the logistics of getting them out, of reviewing uh, the applications. So if you do want to apply, just scan this QR code and you'll be taken to the application form. Yeah, let it, whoops, sorry. Let everyone take a photo of that. And if you miss this and want to want to see it later, I can give you the, the link as well. Why are we sending out cameras? What, why is Maplery and, and what does Meta care about this? Um, well, one thing we care about is improving the, the availability of sidewalk data. Um, and so we're giving out cameras to, to the US and Europe in particular to make sure that we can understand where a sidewalk's located. Um, Chris actually has been working on some really cool techniques to derive sidewalks from street level imagery. Uh, and then there's also the trails working group in OSM US, which is about mapping a lot of trails, hiking trails that aren't currently on OSM. So we're hoping the cameras go to these kind of places. So if you've applied or thinking about applying we're, we're definitely prioritizing applications that care about pedestrian data. And that's because cars, car-centric navigation has had a lot of attention in the history of maps, but pedestrian navigation has always been neglected. And, and so we're trying to change that. So if you're a regular Maplery contributor, you have a plan for how to use the imagery, you're based in the US or Europe, and you're able to capture it quite often um, and in, interested in the same things that we are, then, then please do apply. Okay, another quiz break. So any guesses, go ahead and shout them out. Greece, who said Greece? Way back, raise your hand high, yeah, great. Yeah, Greece, and if you have a specific city, you can get a bonus. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if you've been there, I think it's probably a, a good, obvious one. Great guess. Cool. Uh, so a couple case studies we'll cover quickly. Uh, users of Mapillary we want to highlight. So this is Site Tour 360. Uh, they do a lot of capture with a very nice mosaic 360 degree camera, and it's usually oriented toward uh, disaster relief. So they will actually go out and survey places that have had damage from hurricanes. So for example, in Florida more recently, and they aim to get that online very quickly within 24 to 36 hours for people elsewhere to view and analyze. Uh, and so it's, it's a very kind of sensitive thing where they, they need to get there in time, record the damage that's happened, help document it, and then find also the change. Uh, so it's very important with mapping. And at the same time, they do a lot of other work that involves things that are intact, and that's also very helpful for mapping. So recently, they, they tested uploading in Orlando, Florida. So it's, uh, if you ever travel and go to Disney World, it's right there. But it has fantastic 360 imagery, and that really helps a lot with improving map data. Uh, again, like seeing sidewalks and places of business. And our other use case we want to highlight for me is the Oslo cycling network. So the city of Oslo uh, was very dedicated in riding bicycles all around the city on the cycling network and they wanted to map the location of all of it but also have a visual of it. So they made a really great contraption where a 360 camera was attached to the bicycle and people went out on different routes every day to capture that imagery. So it's a really great way to help them survey it while also knowing the location and being able to pull that up in their GIS tools later time. And the last case study we share with you is a more recent one. Uh, the World Bank funds a lot of roads around the world. They spend hundreds of millions, probably billions actually, funding the construction of roads. And when they do that, they want to make sure that the roads are safe, that the, they're using best case practices to, to you know, install things like guardrails, um, make sure pedestrian crossings are, are, are well marked um, and visible to, to cars. Uh, and so one thing they did in Colombia was they took data from Waze, the, the map. They had all the telemetry of where vehicles are traveling. They took uh, data from Facebook's uh, Data for Good or Meta's Data for Good, which has a lot of mobility data about like where people are located. And then they took mapillary imagery that was in the city. And putting all these together, they could see um, where the hazards were occurring most frequently and then use the semantic segmentation that mapillary provides to see like what are the characteristics 
um, in that image that are common in the areas that have a lot of accidents. And, and so it's early days, but it, it was really cool that they were able to take all these data sets that have been opened up. Um, obviously good that Waze opened up their telemetry data and put these together to understand um, and create this heat map of, of where accidents are happening and use that to inform the next hundreds of millions of dollars that they invest in road infrastructure improvements. All right, how are we going on time? Do we have to power through? Okay. Three minutes, okay. So, yeah, so quick look at some developer tools. Uh, Mapillary tools, this is a Python library. Uh, you can use it from the command line to upload Mapillary. Uh, if you want to build anything, it's a great reference point also for different Python functions, like reading the location data from Mapillary imagery, uh, doing things like authentication, login, and using this to upload, you can access all kinds of um, different formats, including dash cam videos from Blackview, uh, the different 360 video formats that are cam, as well as uploading GoPros or decoding the uh, location data that's attached to them. Other developer tools include the Mapillary API. Uh, we have the Mapillary JavaScript library that includes the visual, um, the viewer of images, so you can view 360 in that. You can do a lot of other functions around the images. It's an open source project with also plenty to borrow. There's Mapillary vector tiles available. That's an open endpoint for anyone to use. And there's also a Mapillary Python SDK. So it's really nice for things like putting in a bounding box and then getting back all the traffic signs inside of it. Uh, in a GeoJSON format, and a lot of other data retrieval that's a little more complicated to do writing it from scratch. And that wraps up most of what we've got to offer. We want to highlight other events going on this week that will feature Mapillary. Uh, so we have later, whoop, these are both today, the 29th, right? Oh, sorry, that's sorry. Both tomorrow, the 29th. Um, we have a review of Mapillary traffic sign data quality and open street map coverage. So that's happening in the other building, second floor. It's going to look at how uh, the Mapillary detected data compares to open street map. And then also the same building later that day. Ed's going to talk about augmented reality and why open map data is critical to the future of computing and uh, about spatial understanding. And, and then finally, we're going to have on Friday from Yunji the Building Heights discussion about uh, taking open data about buildings around the world and putting that into open maps to be easily referenced and, and used by people that use OpenStreetMap. <laughs>